All right, everyone, we're back for week eight of Picks with Pete. Had a pretty good week last week. Seven, five, and one had our first push of the season, I know. And guess what, everybody? We've done it. We've hit our illustrious goal, almost. We are now at 49, 49, and one on the season. We're so close. It's two good weeks in a row. We're ready for it. Here we go. We're going to be in the green next week. I can feel it. Let's get started. Biggest game of the day, probably. Pittsburgh at Baltimore, two top AFC North teams. Now, Pittsburgh's undefeated after a nice win against Tennessee last week. Almost blew the lead, but they look strong up front. This Pittsburgh rushing defense is absolutely no joke. I don't know how Baltimore's going to run the ball against them. Chiefs kind of put the game plan out there on how to stop Lamar. You load the box, dare him to throw. Don't know if that's going to be successful anymore, Baltimore. You may have to change up your offense. Now, they are coming off a bye, so they may have made some tweaks here and there. I trust Harbaugh to make the right adjustments. But the pressure's really going to be on Lamar dealing with that Pittsburgh front four. I don't like them in this game. Pittsburgh's too good of a team. Getting four. Take the Steelers plus four. Hey, man, they're pretty good. Okay, time to talk about the Jets. The goddamn Jets. Yes, they actually covered last week. The first week, I didn't freaking take them. I know. Freaking A, man. The Jets are just an absolute train wreck. I hate them so much sometimes. They're all over the place. Only lost by eight. Of course, they had a 10-point lead going into half against the Bills and couldn't do anything in the second half. So, typical Jet fashion. But they're getting 19 and a half right here from Kansas City. I'm literally only betting this number. I would totally stay away from this. I have no idea what the Jets are going to do. I have no idea what the Chiefs are going to do. They're going to win this game comfortably. Who knows if it's by 20? Who knows if it's by 17? I don't know. I'm taking the Jets plus 19 and a half here just because in good conscience, I couldn't swallow 20 points in an NFL game. Okay, Titans at the Bengals. Titans almost came back and beat Pittsburgh last week, like I said, after they were down 24. Pretty strong showing in the second half. They didn't have much of a run game with Henry, and Tannehill threw the ball pretty well. A.J. Brown, man, is certainly coming on as an elite wide receiver. Six catches and a buck 63. <laughs> That's a real good week for him last week, including a 75-yard touchdown. And Cincinnati put up a real good fight against Cleveland. Fell short. Joe Burrows had a nice game. Led what should have been the game-winning drive, but the Bengals' defense shit the bed. What else is new? Um, no Joe Mixon, no Joe Mixon this week for Cincy. So I like Tennessee to dominate this game up front. They're a good team. Cincinnati's run defense is not very good. We've seen them get run all over this year. I expect Derrick Henry to have a big game. Titans are better than a touchdown. Here, take the Titans minus six and a half. Okay, sneaky trap game right here. It's two a time in Miami. Dolphins coming off a bye, getting the Rams coming back across country on a short week. Rams look dominant in their game against the Bears, but the Bears have no offense. And I think they're in an awkward spot right here. Dolphins have won two in a row. Defense has only given up eight points in those last two games. Combined, averaging eight points a game in those last two games. So defense is playing really well for Miami. I don't know what we're going to see from Tua. No film on him. They're going to have to be watching college film over there in L.A. to try and figure out what's going on. Again, early 1 o'clock game on a short week flying across country. Big factor on the travel. I think this is an ugly game. I think the Rams win this one. Sweep by, but I'm taking the Dolphins plus three and a half right here. Tua plays okay. I don't think he plays great. And the Rams win this really low scoring, ugly game. Okay, Colts at the Lions. Now the Lions finally, finally blew a fourth quarter lead and then came back and won the game. Probably because they were playing the Falcons, the only other team that blows more fourth quarter leads than the Lions. So they're feeling high and mighty. Good win for them, but they're getting the Colts coming off a bye. The Colts have been playing really strong after that beat up, after they got beat up against Cleveland. I think they readjusted some things up front. They're doing a better job protecting Phillip Rivers. Some of these young wide receivers are coming on for Indy. And Detroit stays committed to running the ball. Not sure why. DeAndre Swift's been having a nice couple weeks, but I don't love the way they run the ball. Some of these run plays and situations are not great. It's like you have Matt Stafford and some pretty good wide receivers throw the damn ball in these spots. But they don't. Indianapolis has the number one ranked fantasy defense against running backs. So they don't allow running backs to do much against you. They, you know, they play this nice zone coverage. They'll let you take the short stuff. But they're going to shut down the run, make you go the length of the field against them. Don't know if Detroit can do it. I think Indy's run game is going to have a nice day. Jonathan Taylor behind that offensive line. I don't know if Detroit's going to be able to stop them much. I like the Colts minus three here. I think the Colts are a real, real team. Okay, Patriots at the Bills. 
Uh, these two teams have not played good the last few weeks. After all the COVID stuff, Cam has looked terrible for the Patriots. Threw three interceptions last week and got yanked for Jared Stenham. He's going to play again this week. He's got no wide receivers, though. No Nikhil Harry. No Julian Edelman. New England's in full sell mode. They're trying to tank. They're definitely trying to get a new quarterback. Cam's not their guy. Ugh, I'm really worried about them as a whole thing. I feel bad for Cam because he looked good to start the season, and it's just, I don't know. He's not making the he's not making the right throws is the problem. Guys are open, and he's just missing them. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe lack of, maybe COVID after effects. I don't think so. He said he didn't have any symptoms. It just seems to be not running smooth in New England right now. Doesn't help that he doesn't have any weapons, but hey, what are you going to do? Bills have not looked good either. They struggled against the Jets. They kicked eight field, attempted eight field goals against them, made six of them. They couldn't do anything. They've gotten beat by the Titans handily, got beaten by the Chiefs handily. Josh Allen has regressed back to what he was last year, which is a real shame. He was making a strong push to make that next step as a young quarterback. They're going to have to figure it out. This is going to be a get-right game, I think, for the Bills. Patriots have a, the defense wasn't even playing good against San Francisco last week. Bills are all over the Patriots this week. I think they're trying to cement themselves winning this division. I like the Bills minus four here. Get back on the right track. Okay, Vegas at the Browns. Browns lost OBJ for the entire season after Baker threw a terrible interception. What else is new? But came back strong. They had to go the distance with Cincinnati, which you don't love to see if you're going to be a good team. Baker threw for five touchdowns, but he only threw the ball 28 times for 297 yards. So stayed within that model, and that's what they're going to have to do. Vegas got thumped by Tampa Bay. Now, I don't know if it was Vegas is not looking good or Tampa Bay is that scary good. They had some offensive line COVID issues throughout the week. Vegas, so that may have been an issue last week too, but bad weather in Cleveland. I like the Browns running game right here. They're going to pound the rock. It's going to be 50 and rainy. I think two and a half points. They're going to beat up on the Raiders here. Probably win by 10 points or so. Be in control the entire game. They're going to feel good about themselves again because it's the Browns. Don't know if this team is there to make a push in the playoff. Probably going to get in, but damn, that division is tough. Three wild cards out of the AFC North. I think so. But again, Browns minus two and a half. I think Vegas is going, they're trending opposite directions. And yeah, that's, that's just it. Okay, Packers, or Vikings at the Packers. Well, the Vikings are coming off a bye and they're getting Dalvin Cook back. That's pretty good. But uh, going to have three corners out this week and an already awful, awful secondary. Cam Dantzler out with coronavirus. Mike Hughes out on the IR. Holton Hill out for the game. So we're playing, I don't even know. I think Torrell, my man Torrell is playing corner for the Vikings this week. Oh, it's going to be a shit show. Now, Green Bay is without Aaron Jones, but who needs a running back when you can just throw all over the secondary? Expect Devontae Adams to have a monster game for Green Bay. Packers love whooping up on the Vikings. I'm sure Aaron Rodgers is going to hold nothing back. They didn't look great against Houston where I thought they would last week, so maybe they got a little something-something for us this week. Packers minus 6.5. Don't think this game is close. The only thing I'd be worried about is a garbage backdoor cover from the Vikings, but I think 6.5 is too big of a number. Packers don't let it get that close. Okay, Chargers at the Broncos. Justin Herbert, man, he has been carving it up as a young rookie. Only has one win, but damn, has he looked good in that in those in all his games? Not his fault they're losing. And Denver, they didn't look great back. Uh, come Drew Locke coming back, they played in a blizzard against Kansas City. Denver's defense played pretty good. Pretty much shut down Kansas City the whole game. The score might deceive you. They had a pick six, two fumbles inside the red zone, and a kick return for a touchdown Kansas City. So that offense didn't do much for Kansas City. Now, can you say, were they off the gas? Were they in control? Yes, probably. But still, Phil Lindsay's questionable with a concussion. He was bad. He looked good. Melvin Gordon was back last week. He did fumble. I'm hoping the weather's better in Denver, but who the hell knows? Probably not. I like to see Drew Locke get his tight end, Noah Fant, more involved. I think that's a real safety valve for him. And then you can stretch the field with Jared Judy. I do like Denver here. Big cold weather. Chargers kind of struggle with Jacksonville, especially stopping the run. So I think there might be a little ground and pound here and then play action over the top for Denver. I'm going to take the Broncos plus three here because I'm just apprehensive on the Chargers as a whole. Love me some Justin Herbert. I just I don't know what the team around him is and if it's any good. You think they would be better, but they just find ways not to win games. So I'm going to go with the Broncos here. A little bit of a reach maybe, but Broncos plus three. Okay, Saints at the Bears. Now I know, I know the Saints can't play outdoors. But they can run the football, and the Bears can't run the football. And there's going to be about 25-mile-an-hour wins on Sunday in Chicago at 4 o'clock. So this is going to be 
awful to throw the ball. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be cold. What else is new? Chicago in October. Going to be bad. Saints minus five here. I'm taking them. I know. Nick Foles has been absolutely terrible. I know I've said it before. Man can't start a quarterback. He's a great relief quarterback. Can't start. He's thrown an interception in five straight games. That's not good. And Chicago's average was averaging 1.3 yards a carry the last two weeks. That's You can't do that. Saints defense is solid against the run. They're going to be able to pound the rock with Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray. It's going to be a ball control dominant game. Really low scoring, but I think the Saints get this one done. Minus five here. Probably win this game by a touchdown. Okay, Niners at the Seahawks. Now, Russell Wilson played kind of bad with three interceptions on Sunday night, uh, even though he threw for three touchdowns in a tough loss at Arizona. You know, hey, shout out to the Cardinals, Kyler Murray and those guys. But I think they bounce back right here. I love Russell Wilson in this spot. He doesn't lose two in a row. They're a pretty good team. They're undefeated. Now, they added Carlos Dunlap to try and help fix this pass rush on the defense because the defense is an issue. It's an absolute train wreck. But I like them here. They're get, uh, given three points. I like them at home. Again, I just don't see them playing bad back-to-back weeks. Now, I could be wrong. The Niners are rolling. Two dominant performances the last two weeks. But, man, they are so banged up. They're three running backs down right now, the Niners. And, a wide, and their star wide receiver, Debo Samuel, who they had playing running back last week. So it's going to be a Jimmy G throw game. I don't know if you can trust Jimmy G to throw the rock, even as bad as this defense is. Do you really trust him to throw the ball to kill, only to Kittle and maybe Kendrick Bourne? I don't. So I'm going to take the Seahawks minus three here. Ah, Sunday night game. All right. The, everyone's favorite Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. Man, the NFC least. Just so bad. Dallas, I think, has quit on their team. I mean, Andy Dalton took a cheap shot last week. In the in- Nobody on that team went to bat for him. Nobody started a fight. Nobody got into the guy who hit him. And it was just a really bad look. I know everyone's carved him up all week. They're going to have some rookie seventh-rounders starting over there. They don't stand a chance, Dallas. The defense is bad. The offense is bad. I don't know what they're going to do. Philly's finally starting to get healthy on the offense. The defense has always been solid. Need a little bit of help on the back end, Philly. But I just they're going to overwhelm Dallas right here. It's for first place. Philly minus 9.5. I think they cruise. They want to beat up on Dallas. They want to make a statement on Sunday night. Philly by 17-20 to 20 right here. Dallas has quit on their team. I think Mike McCarthy's done. Jerry's got to admit he made a mistake. It's a disaster. they got to start tanking for picks. Eagles on the right track. I do like them to finish up and win this division because they are finally getting healthy. Be nice to see what Carson Wentz can do with some actual weapons. But like I said, it's not really about the Eagles here. It's more about the Cowboys and the lack of heart and talent that they got going on. So Eagles minus nine and a half. Okay, last game, Monday night. Tampa Tom and the Buccaneers at the New York Football Giants. Now the Giants played on Thursday, so they kind of had like an extended mini buy going here with 11 days off. But they still lost to the Eagles. I mean, they were competitive, I guess, kind of. I just don't know what I'm going to get from Daniel Jones from a week-to-week basis. They can't run the ball. Got some decent wide receivers and a tight end. But Ingram dropped the game-winning touchdown against the Eagles. Who knows if that's going to play in his headspace and if they're even going to throw him the ball still. Killing me in fantasy, Ingram. And then, hot damn, Tampa has looked so impressive the last two weeks. Totally put it on Vegas. Tom Brady is playing out of his mind. NFC Player of the Month. They got Fournette back. They got Ronald Jones back. They added Antonio Brown. He's not going to be here this week, but he'll be here the next week. Lost Chris Godwin, I know, this week with a fractured finger. Hopefully Mike Evans is supposed to be healthy, healthy so we're going to see a lot of Mike Evans. Gronk is playing like old Gronk. you got to love that. You can't, I can't say enough about the Tampa Bay defense either. They are absolutely shutting people down left and right. Super opportunist. Can't run the ball on them. They get after the quarterback, and then they force turnovers. That's what you want with that offense and that combo with that defense. Can't say enough things about Tampa. I'm loving them as my Super Bowl pick. Tampa minus 12 here. Take Tom and the Bucks, and all things are good. All right, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Remember, you can follow my picks on Action Network. Check out the links in the description for more of our content, and I'll see you guys next week.